hello and uh, welcome to the channel and for today's video we are looking at uh, Robin uh, issue number eight released um, in uh, what is it July of uh, 94 so this is right smack in the middle of my uh, hardcore collecting uh, years um, and uh, this is also right dab in the middle of the entire nightfall night quest night uh, night send uh, storyline you know involving the uh, the uh, the breaking of Batman's back and his return and all of that so this is near the end of that you know night's end um, this is near the end of that storyline. Uh, we're reaching its conclusion. Um, and uh, yeah, um, this um, issue is credited by uh, Chuck Dixon as writer. Tom Grummet is the artist. And uh, Chrising, uh, or Chrising, I don't know how you say his name. I don't know his first name. Give me one second and we'll look in the credits. Um, so yeah, it's, um, it was a, uh, fun time in comics, you know, if you were a collector back then, you know, a lot of stuff was happening, uh, but again, most of this, all of this that's going on with, uh, DC comics and Marvel to an extent, but DC's really felt it, really felt the, um, the boom, right, by image, um, and um, they were doing a lot of stuff that um, a lot of uh, purists were like, what's going on? Why are you doing this? Um, you know, it, it was basically just uh, DC doing whatever they could to stay relevant, um, you know, to comic audiences, comic readers. Um, because uh, even though... Uh, Image was still a pretty small publisher. Um, I mean, yeah, sure, they would release more and more uh, comic series as time goes on, but this is what, uh, like I said, July of 94. Uh, you know, Image has been around for maybe a couple of years. And, um, you know, they were still pretty much, they were publishing half the books that uh, either Marvel or DC were doing at that time. And at that, at that time, each publisher was putting out like 30 books a week or something. Well, I mean, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but you know, you know what I mean? They were putting out a lot of books a month and uh, Image was, you know, not even doing half. And they were already like the number two publisher, right? So in response, DC uh, killed Superman. They broke Batman's back. They turned uh, Hal Jordan uh, evil, which we saw recently with the... Uh, the Green Lantern issue, and um, so yeah, uh, DC were doing a lot of stuff that um, a lot of people weren't necessarily agreeing with, uh, but this is basically what happens when you're backed up against the wall, right, um, metaphorically speaking. And uh, so yeah, so like I said, uh, Chuck Dixon is the uh, store credit for story, um, Tom Gromit Pencils, Ray uh, Cryosense, um Finishes. So I guess uh, Tom didn't really complete the pencils on the, well, I mean, he's credited as penciler, but usually when an inker is credited as finishes, the artist usually doesn't do the whole, uh, you know, tight pencils on the artwork, right? So it's, um, that's why, uh, you get sometimes inkers getting credited as finishes because they add more to their of their style to the artwork than just rap, than just uh, you know even though inkers do have a style believe it or not um, I mean a clear example if you ever looked at um, Jim Lee's pencils and once and then the inks uh, by Scott Williams you can tell uh, you know there is a, a, a flourish there. And right now, Scott Williams has transitioned 
not full time, but he's transitioned into being a penciler. And you can tell his style really, um, is not really close to, uh, you know, it's somewhere related to the Jim Lee style, but um, you can tell it's still Scott Williams, right? So inkers do have a style. But when you look at this, and if you're familiar with Tom Gromit's work, it pretty much looks like Tom Gromit, um, right? So, um, and uh, Gromit, I always like compared to a uh, Mark Bagley, Mark Bagley uh, at Marvel, uh, you know, um, uh, a pre, uh, you know, if you, you know, Mark Bar oh, I can't speak, Mark Bagley or Ron Lim, you know, guys that um, you can depend on. But uh, there goes my dog. Give me one second. Oh, hopefully that shut off the dog a little bit. <clears throat> Every time somebody <laughs> goes by the house, she has to start barking. Okay, so anyway, I was saying uh, Mark Bagley and uh, Tom Gromit, you know, I always saw. I always thought them as like the same side of the same coin or both sides of the same coin. Very reliable artists, but nothing too flashy. And um, someone you can, um, you know, put on a book and maybe not your main title, uh, right? You know, he's perfect for, you know, uh, ancillary uh, books, in this case, Robin. I maybe wouldn't. I maybe would not put Gromit on the main Batman title, but uh, he works perfectly fine for, you know, books like here, like Robin. So anyway, because um, uh, he does. So the reason I compare him to Mark Bangley is, for the most part, his characters, you know, are distinguishable from one another, but uh, also they have like a very youthful look to them. Uh, so. Um, it's um it's um i mean it's 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 in the style but uh also you know it's just um i guess i don't know you would call it like a quirk of theirs i don't know but uh, you know they, their characters tend to look a little more youthful even their their adult their adults you know can be distinguished as adults but still a little you know youthful looking um, so here we have a, um, an opening splash, um, we have Nightwing in his classic costume, so uh, this is Tim Drake, Robin, uh, you know, uh, so he's the third Robin, of course, so for those who don't know, this is the third Robin after the original, uh, Tim, um, uh, original Robin, uh, you know, became Nightwing, uh, Dick Grayson. And then uh, we had Jason Todd, who later became the Red Hood. And uh, we have uh, uh, Tim Drake here. So he was the third Robin. And here we they're crashing in into a, um, you know, a building. And this guy here, this is Bruce, Bruce Wayne. So around this time, um, all right, Bruce, did you, you know, uh, at this time, Bruce went off. And you'll um, now that I have a, you're gonna see in just a second. Bruce went off basically to retrain himself. Obviously, here he's um, he's walking again, right? So after Bane uh, broke his back, he rehabilitated, and so um, he um, he um, during this time he uh, handed over the mantle of. Um, of Batman over to Azrael, uh, John Paul Valley, uh, and um, over the course of time, uh, John Paul's methods um, became a little too violent, you know. I guess, uh, you know, Batman didn't want, the, <laughs> uh, Bruce didn't want the uh, image, uh, the Batman image to be, uh, you know, taking uh, uh, a hit in, in his reputation so um, eventually uh, in order to reclaim the mantle from John Paul Valley he um, he had to rediscover himself retrain himself again so he went off and um, and uh, found himself training again with uh, I believe these are all the League of Shadows and um, 
the League of Shadows were being trained by uh, Lady Shiva. And Lady Shiva is regarded in the you know DC universe as one of the most deadliest hand-to-hand -hand combat fighters you know in the world. Uh, so um, Bruce sought her out to retrain him, uh, you know, train him in new methods in order to combat this um, this new um, version of Batman. You know, the uh, that us in the um, comics uh, fandom would affectionately call as bats. So, uh, because John Paul Valley was Azrael before, right? So, um, and you can see here how she easily uh, subdues um, Nightwing. Um, so, uh, both Robin and Nightwing don't approve of uh, Bat uh, Bruce, you know, um, training with her, right? They're, um, they're afraid or feel fearful that Bruce would cross a line that normally he wouldn't cross um, you know they're confident in Bruce that um, he uh, can take down uh, John Paul Valley in his way right without having to you know go to these uh, extreme measures of having to train with uh, Lady Shiva But for Bruce, you know, he he has to get with the times eventually. Um, and of course, the times in uh, comics at this time meant you gotta be more gotta be more violent, because otherwise you can't compete with Image. Um, so here we uh, encounter a um, some kind of a guy in a suit. That was picked up in a flaming river. Um, they remove the um, they remove his uh, helmet, and uh, he just utter stutters, you know, fire, fire, and Batman. And then they were like, "My God, what does that mean?" So uh, eventually, you know, we find out. Oh, it's um, it's Azrael Batman um, coming out of the river. Uh, so he was fighting that other guy, right? kicked his ass, left him to burn or drown, or both. And um, uh, yeah, his methods are becoming a, uh, a little more extreme by the day. I believe the reason for that is the um, the uh, his training uh, or uh, not training programming. Uh, when he became Azrael, it was like you know, programmed in his mind um, by his father, who was like, I don't know, whatever generation Azrael. Um, so when he trained, it was more like a, uh, you know, it was basically downloaded into his head, right? Um, so uh, because he was pretty much a wimpy uh, guy. Um, and then when he got the training, uh, for those who don't know, find the uh, Sword of Azrael uh, miniseries drawn by um, by um, blah, 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 Joe Quesada. And you'll get the origin for um, Azrael. Uh, that's a nasty sunburn. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, here we have some uh, bad guy. Um, if he had a... Uh, <laughs> You know, you can tell he's a bad guy. If he had a longer mustache, you could, you know, he'd be twirling it. Uh, but so far, you know, um, the uh, I haven't said much about the artwork because it's pretty much solid artwork all around. Uh, you know, it's not a um, um, no. You're not gonna find anything wrong with um, Tom Grummet's work. Like I said earlier, you know, it's all solid. He knows how to move around. Look at just the sequence right here. On these two pages, right? Um, a basic establishing shot, so they're in some sort of theater, right? And then you've got these red ninjas, you know, waiting around uh, for the training session to begin. And then, when then here we have a uh, a, fairly, a figure in silhouette, but we know that's um, Lady Shiva. She's the one that put on the uh, the mask earlier. Um, 
and then uh, you know she proceeds to kick the ass of all of those guys. Um, but the entire sequence, you know, he knew he uh, Gromit knows how to move the camera around and all of that. Um, and you know, this sequence. Um, tell me that doesn't remind you of um, uh, Kill Bill, right? Uh, the scene uh, with the um, uh, the bride. Uh, right before she confronts, uh, you know, Orinishi, uh, you know, uh, when they fight in the in the darkness and the and the room is backlit, uh, I believe it's blue, and um, and in this case it's red, um, and um, as I've I uh, said a few times before. Uh, if you can pick your right spot using just silhouettes. Uh, it's a perfect, um, you know, it's just uh, spot on, uh, great use of silhouettes here. Uh, but also, you know, it works as a, a shortcut to get to a page quicker. Right? <clears throat> but then here we have, uh, you know, here we have Bruce uh, standing on top of the head of his favorite uh, eagle uh, mon monument or whatever in Gotham's overlooking Gotham City, pondering to himself if he still got it. Does he have what it takes to take down Azrael uh, as bats? Which we have here, you know. You got some, uh, you know, street kids. Um, they find the uh, Batmobile in, the, in an alley. And then here comes, you know, Azrael. So uh, this uh, version of Azrael, I believe this is like the third or second, uh, I don't know, second or third version of the original redesigned costume for Azrael, uh, you know, or for Batman. Uh, you know, this um, Azrael is, um, uh, give me one second. Okay, uh, uh, um, I just had to reach for something. Uh, this version of Azrael is like the second or third uh, revision of the uh, Asbats costume. Um, um, the original uh, helmet was more simpler, basically like the basic uh, Batman cowl, except it had a uh, everything was covered uh, in his face. Uh, he had like a pouch belt on his thigh. Um, you know, everything else is pretty much close. I don't believe, I believe he had a basic, a regular cape. He didn't have like these blade, bladed uh, cape. Um, and um, someone who did a great updated version of the classic Israel Batman uh, costume was Sean Gordon Murphy on the uh, White Knight series, Curse of the White Knight. Um, I don't have the, um, I don't have the, um, the comics here with me, but uh, I do have the uh, figure for it, um, the uh, the McFarlane uh, version of uh, of that costume, and you can see some uh, some similarities, uh, but also a different take, uh, an updated take of the uh, costume by uh, Sean Gordon Murphy, right? Um, but this is a little more closer to the original. Uh, as bats design except you know it's a lot more darker you know the original costume did have gray and blue and all of that like pretty much the scheme um, but um, Gordon did a, a good job of just keeping it uh, mostly darkly colored um, so yeah if you can find that series as well uh, Curse of the White Knight I highly recommend it So uh, here, uh, you know, Asbat scared off the uh, the kids as he gets into the Batmobile, and then here we have um, Nightwing and uh, Robin looking over some uh, plans, uh, some blueprints for something, and then we have uh, an appearance by a little known character um, who would often pop up from time to time in co Batman comics, Harold. He is a uh, mute, I believe, uh, or had some sort of handicap, but apparently he was like some sort of technical genius. So Batman found him and, you know, pretty much uh, put him to work in the Batcave. Um, 
of course that's simplifying things you know treats him well um parent but you know later on harold meets an untimely fate in the hush storyline i believe it's in hush and then here we have uh gordon commissioner gordon um uh, for tonight sarah one sarah that's not his wife right i believe his wife was also barbara like the kid that girl barbara gordon um sarah sarah ensign right isn't it i believe they had an affair or something i don't know uh i think she becomes commissioner sometime uh, you know four or five six years down the line in the early 2000s i think i, I think the joker kills her uh, blah 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 and then here we have i believe this is uh tim's father in the wheelchair yeah tim called him because you know i guess it's out late and he has to check in that was something uh, kids used to do back then. I don't know if they still do. But when I used to go out, I always had to check in with my parents. And then uh, here we have um, somebody that said, let's get to work. I'm guessing that's Batman. Bruce, sorry, Bruce. Uh, and then we have... Uh, the uh, river, uh, I don't know what Gotham River that's it, that is, or is that a boat, yeah, something's on fire. Uh, we got two guys running away, big explosion, and ah, uh, ta-da, here comes, here comes um, Asbats, scaring the shit out of these guys, blast them with flames from his uh, gauntlets. Purifying them in fire or something like that. Um, you know, fear me and all of that. You know, very extreme intimidation tactics, which is why uh, Bruce wants the mantle back, not just, you know, because it's his, but, you know, he's seeing what is happening in Gotham with uh, Asbat's uh, running town. Uh, and then here we have this shot of some bats uh, in the sky. Um, and then it looks like they crash through this window. Or they attack somebody. This is a cool shot. And then this guy is scared shitless. Turns out it's Bane. So Bane is having like... Uh, you know, nightmare, bat, ma bat nightmares of his defeat at the hands of Azrael Batman. And the guards are like, uh, shut up. Uh, you know. And they walk away, then they, pa they get past um, Edward Nigma, aka the Riddler. Right. What's going on? What's going to shut up? None of your business and all of that. And of course, uh, Bane, for those who don't know, if you're only familiar with Bane from the uh, Dark Knight uh, Rises, you know, Bane is Latin American or Latino, just Latino. Uh, he says Murcielago, Murcielago, which means that, right? And then... Um, he says he has returned so he knows bruce is back because <laughs> apparently they have some sort of weird connection um do i say it in the um in the dark knight rises voice you know he has returned oh that's a bad that's a bad imitation uh and then here we have uh tim uh happily looking happy and uh, welcome back and it looks like, yep, we get Bruce back in the uh, Batman costume. Um, the, in my opinion, the uh, Batman costume. Um, 
you know, um, for me, the definitive Batman look, um, the blue uh, and uh, yellow with the uh, yellow oval and the, and the bat, you know. Um, this is this was the look for Batman, you know. I don't know. I, I want to say for like you know a majority of his uh, time, you know. Uh, obviously, when he was first introduced in like the thirties and whatnot, twenties and thirties, late twenties, early thirties, um, he had just a, a basic uh, you know version of this with uh, the black symbol. Then as the costume evolved, this was pretty much the costume right from like the fifties up until you know the 90s you know up until around this point um, and then um, after this um, a few issues later in like uh, the uh, Batman main Batman series uh, we go into like the um, the Troika uh, storyline uh, drawn by um, Kelly uh, uh, what's his name Kelly Kelly Jones um, and uh, it's basically just an, uh, an all black costume with the uh, yellow oval symbol uh, and then eventually um, much later on uh, like for most of the 2000s you know uh, pretty much when uh, Jim Lee took over and did the uh, Hush storyline he uh, reverted that, uh, the costume to the um, the black and uh, not the black the gray uh, black and gray uh, costume, uh, which pretty much, if you're from, you know, if you've seen uh, the Bat, uh, uh, Ben Affleck version of Batman, that's pretty much the costume uh, that uh, that's been in use in comics for like the past twenty something years. Uh, until recently, uh, updated versions of this costume uh, with the yellow oval has started to pop up again. Um, but uh, for the most part, it's been um, the uh, the black and gray version with the large bat symbol uh, without the yellow oval but to me this is the uh, for me this is the uh, best incarnation of uh, the bat costume um, they even gave him the uh, the pointy uh, shoulders like um, that McFarlane started doing uh, you know during his uh, year two run um, and various you know covers um, not many adopted it I mean it, some did, but for the most part, not a lot, uh, you know, did it. Um, I guess they saw it as a, uh, you know, appropriating somebody else's look. And so everybody wants to do their own thing. But, you know, it, it works when it's done well. Some would give them really exaggerated long uh, tips. Uh, but when they're done like this subtly, you know, it looks good. So, yeah, it's... Um, it's a pretty good, uh, you know, um, issue all, all around. Uh, there goes my daughter again. Give me one second. Uh, well, we're just finishing up, so whatever. Uh, keep the dog barking. So yeah, the um, again, you know, didn't really go go over a lot of the artwork because you know it's pretty simple. You know, it's, I mean, simple in the terms of you know, it's it's really well, well drawn. Nothing really to look out for. You know. Um, Nothing really uh, pops up at you, you know, in like the traditional uh, image style, right? Uh, where a lot of stuff is like in your face. Uh, but um, technically everything is drawn just spot on, uh, you know. Uh, him and um, um, uh, 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 Jackson Guys, who we looked over uh, in the Action Comics issue um, a few videos ago, you know very consistent very um, um, excellent uh, artists in their own right they you know they don't have to do anything fancy to um, tell the story um, uh, you know just all around solid artists uh, that you want on you know if you got a company uh, you know a large company that's somebody you want on your roster that you can depend on for whatever assignment you know um, and uh, Tom Grummet is uh, you know one of those guys uh, so yeah, that's, uh, pretty much it for this, uh, video. Um, thank you for watching, um, like, comment, subscribe, thumbs up, thumbs down, you know, interact, 
uh, you know, whatever. Let me know what you guys think of these videos. And um, yeah, I'll uh, I'll catch you all on the next one.